This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. This is the Learning to Sew video series. We're going to go over some basics of the sewing machine and a little bit later on we're going to show you some practical techniques to get your sewing project off beautifully. To get started sewing, we need to understand a little bit of the basics of a sewing machine. So we're going to go over some of the components of the machine. And starting on this side, we have the balance wheel. This is what drives a sewing machine and typically there's a belt mounted to the balance wheel. And then moving over, we have the length lever down here. The length lever controls the stitch length. All the way at the top on this sewing machine is the longest stitch length. And then going down, this would be a shorter stitch length. And then all the way to the bottom, this would be reverse. On some sewing machines, this re the length lever is a knob, and it, sometimes the reverse is actually a button. On this machine, it is actually a lever. Up here, we have the width lever. This lever controls the straight stitch, and then anything over all the way to the left would be a zigzag stitch, because this is a zigzag straight stitch machine. This lever controls the needle position. All the way over, the needle's to the left and center and right. So the needle can be moved left, right, or center to get closer to hard objects like zippers or bolt rope. So you may not necessarily need to replace a presser foot on this sewing machine because you have a needle positioning lever at the top here. One of the most important knobs on the sewing machine is the tension knob. This knob controls the tension of the thread. So if you have a loose stitch on the bottom side, you need more upper tension. So remember, upper tension assembly or upper tension knob. That's an important feature of a sewing machine. And then on this machine we have the foot lifter lever which is up on the top of this machine. Oftentimes on other sewing machines you'll find them in the back and you lift the lever and the presser foot lifts up. Your sewing machine will also have a foot pedal. This is a variable speed foot control. The further down you go, the faster the machine, the less pressure, the slower the machine operates. All sewing machines operate with a bobbin, that is if it's a lock stitch machine. Some home sewing machines will have a slide plate at the top where you drop the bobbin in above. On the Alter Feed sewing machine, the bobbin is underneath and you need to slide this plate open to gain access to the bobbin underneath. I'm going to tilt the machine back so we can see the bobbin below. A locking stitch machine requires a bobbin to create a stitch, so you have to fill bobbins when they run out, and we will be showing you that in the series. We're going to set the sewing machine up in preparation for you to get started sewing. One of the first things you need to do on a sewing machine is basically plug it in. Obviously we plugged it into the wall, but many sewing machines have a plug that has to be plugged into the sewing machine from the side. So now we've had power. And now threading of the machine is required. There are two types of thread for the most part. You have an industrial thread and you have a home sewing thread. A home sewing thread can be pulled from the side like this. But if you pull on an industrial cone of thread from the side, notice it doesn't spin. So this can cause all kinds of tensioning problems. This type of home sewing thread bobbin goes up here and an industrial cone goes on a thread stand and you must pull it off the top of the cone. Okay, so now we're pulling off the top of the cone. Let's remove the home bobbin and get ready for threading. Since we don't have any thread underneath in the bobbin, that is our first task. So I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin. We need to come off of our cone of thread. We're using an industrial cone, so we're coming off the top. On the Alter Feed sewing machine, we have what it looks like a pigtail. We'll feed the thread through that pigtail and then come around the bobbin tension assembly. This gives the thread some tension prior to the bobbin itself. Then we come over to the spindle for the bobbin. Now we need to place a bobbin on this spindle. Okay, we first need to get the bobbin out of the sewing machine. You may have some spare bobbins and you could just fill those up, but we're gonna pull the bobbin from underneath the sewing machine because it's empty right now. We're gonna lift the machine up. We're gonna grab the lever of the bobbin case, pull it towards the end of the machine and pull out the case and the bobbin. Now to remove the bobbin from its case, let go of the lever and then simply turn it upside down and the bobbin comes out. Now we'll take the bobbin and put it on the spindle at the top and push it down. 
Now we'll take our thread that we already have coming through the pretensioner and feed it through one of the holes in the bobbin. If your bobbin does not have holes, you can wrap it around the bobbin several times and that will hold the thread in place as well. To disengage our drive so the needle does not go up and down, we're going to pull the posi pin from the balance wheel. We can stick it in the keeper of this sewing machine. Some sewing machines, as we talked about, has a, a friction clutch knob. So you would disengage the friction clutch knob so that would disengage the needle so the balance wheel would still spin so you can wind bobbins. Now, kick the spindle over towards the balance wheel. That will engage the uh, bobbin. Next step, just press on the foot control. The foot control is up here on the table so you can see it and you'll notice the bobbin will spin. Once you've wound enough thread on the bobbin, you can take your scissors or a seam ripper and you can cut the thread off the top and dispose of that. And then continue to wind. Once the bobbin's full, this will either stop spinning or will automatically kick over. On this machine, it stops spinning. That bobbin is now full. Now that the bobbin's full, we'll just cut the thread. Now we'll take our bobbin case and insert our bobbin inside the case. On our sewing machine, the bobbin needs to spin clockwise when you pull on the thread. Some sewing machines are different, so refer to your manual for more information about that. We'll put the bobbin into the case. There's a little slit in the side of the bobbin case. We'll pull the thread through the slit and underneath the spring to the opening. Now your bobbin's ready for use. To insert a bobbin in the sewing machine, you need to make sure that the needle is not down in the bobbin area. So we're going to roll the balance wheel around so the needle's up. Now you can open up the side plate and put your bobbin in or tilt the machine back. Hold on to the lever. That keeps the bobbin from falling out of the case. And then push it over the spindle. And you may hear a click or you may not hear a click depending on when you let go of the lever. Wiggle the bobbin case to make sure it doesn't fall out. Leave at least four inches of thread dangling underneath the machine. Now we're ready to thread the sewing machine. We're going to pull the thread out of the bobbin tensioner. We're going to go through this pigtail on this machine. We're going to go through this guide here. There are three holes in it. And we're going to go through this first hole on the right and then the last hole on the left to make a candy cane stripe. Now I'm going to place my finger on top of the thread here so that I can have a little bit of tension when I pull on the thread here. I'm going to go around the upper tension assembly making sure that I'm going through the discs. When threading a machine you must make sure that the presser foot is up. Here I'm going to use a screwdriver and I'm going to wiggle the tension discs. You'll see they are separated. If I lower the presser foot and try to wiggle the tension discs, you'll notice they're nice and solid. It's very difficult to pass the thread through uh, tension discs when the presser foot is down. So lift the presser foot prior to threading. Then I'm going to pull the thread up and catch the take up spring and there's, I'm going to make sure that the thread goes through this little finger. Now I can let go of the thread up above. Now I'm going to roll the balance wheel so that the take-up arm is in the upper position so I can gain better access to it. Now I'll go through the take-up arm from right to left. Above the needle there's a needle bar thread guide which is basically a hole to guide the thread. So we're going to insert the thread from the front side out the back of that guide. And now we'll feed it through the needle from left to right. You need the thread to come down in a straight manner. Once the thread's through the eye of the needle, we're going to pull up the bobbin thread underneath. And to do that, just simply hold on the tail of the thread off to the right. We'll hold fairly loose and we'll rotate the balance wheel towards you. Roll the balance wheel, hold the thread loosely. Once the take up arm is almost at the top here, the take up arm we showed you earlier, We'll pull on the thread and that will pull up the bobbin thread underneath. Now you can take any object and pass it underneath the presser foot and that will lift the bobbin thread all the way through. Now we'll just pass this thread through the middle of the presser foot. 
Our sewing machine is threaded, and in the next video, we're gonna show you how to sew.